Guys, welcome. Um, we appreciate you joining us today. I know uh, there's a lot going on in the world and appreciate you guys taking a minute to sign on and, and chat with us. Um, this is the day in the life of the engineer with Turner Construction. Uh, myself and Donovan will be your hosts. We'll give ourselves an introduction here in a minute, but again, really appreciate you guys taking the time. Uh, feel free to ask questions throughout and uh, we'll take it from here. Again, as we are getting our Menti code uh, worked out, bear with us, if you will. <clears throat> Just want to hit on a couple of uh, etiquette items. I'm sure you guys are familiar with all the Zoom calls we're having these days, but looks like everybody's done a good job. Thanks for putting your names in there so we can interact with you guys. Um, if you will, just keep your mics muted um, unless you're asking a question, so that way we can try to eliminate some of the background noise. Um, feel free to share your camera. Uh, we'd love to connect with you guys that way as well. And then, um, like we said, ask questions. Uh, you should have a raise the hand feature, and then there's also a Q&A box. Uh, feel free to use the chat. We have all that open, so we can kind of make this a dialogue. Happy to answer anything you guys have as we go through this slideshow. So myself and Donovan will be your hosts today. Uh, my name is Michaela Costin. I am here in the Nashville Business Unit uh, with Turner Construction. I've been with Turner going on eight years now. A couple of those years include a cooperative internship while I was in school at Auburn uh, through the building science program there. I am currently serving as a senior SPD PM. Um, our SPD group is our special projects division. We focus really on interiors, build outs, and uh, any projects with volumes uh, $20 million and under. Um, my kind of path to the role I'm in now was serving in previous project engineer and PM roles on various projects over these past eight years. Good morning. Um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Donovan Middlebrook. I've been with Turner about four years now. Um, I'm a project engineer at the moment, but I've bounced back and forth between project engineering and superintendent. Um, I graduated from Mississippi State undergrad, and I have my master's from University of Alabama, Birmingham. And right now I'm in between projects. Um, I just came off of uh, University of Memphis, and now I'm at Shelby County Health Department and about to get ready to work on um, the University of Tennessee Dental School. So being a project engineer, I bounce around on several different projects, uh, sometimes at a time, sometimes I sit on one project. Awesome. So kind of starting broad here, just wanted to talk to you guys. Um, everybody might not know, but what we call a project engineer for a general contractor such as Turner, doesn't mean you have to have a stamp, you don't have to have an engineering degree, you're not necessarily designing anything uh, day in and day out. But as a project engineer, you're really um, the conduit of information for a project. So the best way I can describe that is you are the pathway through which all the information throughout the project flows. You are uh, responsible for getting information and questions from the architects, designers, engineers, to your team, to the owner, to subcontractors, um, and it's just a constant flow of information. So generally, that's, that's being a project engineer in a nutshell. What that kind of consists of is some of these points here and just the over, overall documentation. Um, that's what we do day in and day out. You know, we're building off of plans and specs typically, and then there's a lot of work that goes into keeping that organized so that you can pass that off to the team and to your field staff uh, in an appropriate manner so that they can get the work in place. Um, that, of course, includes submittal and RFI reviews. Um, that's a big chunk of being a project engineer. You're asking hard questions and finding solutions to uh, subs problems and conflicts in the field and getting that information to your superintendent again, to keep the project on track, on budget, on schedule, and then as well as uh, contract documents, so just your overall drawings. Um, unfortunately, in, in today's world, uh, we don't always get a perfect set of drawings, so there's a lot of back and forth with that, and uh, drawings change all the time, so it's really important that you're providing the team the most up-to-date information so that they can build correctly. A couple more points of that are uh, meeting minutes, especially as a general contractor, we have a lot of meetings. We do a lot of coordination. That's kind of our main role um, on a project. And so with that, having accurate meeting minutes and documentation of those meetings, decisions that were made, 
to share with the team is actually really important. Um, kind of as you progress as a project engineer, you work your way into doing some change order reviews. So again, when changes happen, we have to price those through the subcontractor. You get some owner contact with reviewing the pricing and um, reviewing all the backup to get that approved. And then finally, we have closeout, which is last but definitely not least. Um, that's a big part of our project engineer's role is to compile all of the manuals and warranties for all the materials we put in place for a project so that you have a nice clean, basically a uh, binder to give the owner at the end of the project to say, hey, here's how you operate your building. Um, so again, these are just kind of bits and pieces of uh, what our project engineers handle on every, on every job. And it's always kind of catered a little bit to each uh, project as well. So if that's what a project engineer does, what does that make your day look like? Um, typically our project engineers are all based at the job site. We don't have very many engineers who are based in the office, so you're definitely gonna hands-on experience in the field. Um, typically at the job site, you know, you're somewhere between 50-50 or 40-60 between desk work. Again, that's updating drawings, submittals, RFIs, all the various paperwork that goes with that. And then as well as getting to be in the field a good portion of your day too. And that can look like doing quality control checks, um, first installation assignments, walking punch lists, walking with art techs, owners, and coordinating with the subcontractors in the field. Um, definitely your, your main job, kind of as we listed through that, is problem solving. That's the name of the game. Um, to me, being a really successful project engineer means that you're very agile and you're very flexible because you can think that you have your day all planned out and the first thing when you show up that day is there's a, a super important RFI that has to be written so that your superintendent can keep moving in the field. And so you have to be able to pivot and kind of roll with the punches for sure. Um, part of that too is you have such a great team to work with and um, that's, that's a really important part of your day in and day out. All right, so as a project engineer, it's no I and team. Um, when we go out to build buildings, it's not just one person that's building this building. You have to work with different engineers, architects, subcontractors, and your peers. Working with the engineers, these are the guys that are designing this thing on paper, and a lot of the times they don't see the things in the field. So you're taking these plans and you're implementing these plans with the guys in the field, which are the contractors. Also your architects. Sometimes you, you work a lot with your architects and engineers because they design things on paper and a lot of the time your responsibility as a project engineer is also safety. And you have to find ways to build buildings safely. So sometimes you have to you have to figure out a way to implement the design intent with the guys in the field. And sometimes it takes you being that that sole sole piece in the middle to explain to the engineer or the architect this is sometimes we have to do it in face reality. So sometimes your big reality check as a project engineer. Um, the other part of that is the peers, your people around you. No person, no one person can build a building on its own. So it takes people that specialize in all different types of industries to come together to make one thing happen. So that, that comes around to your peers. You have a lot of people that are stronger in other areas. Um, say for instance, concrete, say for instance, um, steel, um, or even your architect. Your architect is extremely good in building things, but you have to bring all these people together and you're the sole source of all of this information of getting things out from the engineers back to the people in the field and watching the finished product. So for all these things that happen, we basically say teamwork makes the dream work. And we, we really mean that because without a team, no project is successful. And a lot of the time, the project engineer is that person that stands in the middle of the team. So you wear several different hats and you all, you, 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 you interact with pretty much every discipline there is um, when it comes from electrical, structural, mechanical, chemical, you name it, you're going to end up touching every discipline there is to create one team. Um, and that's, that's a big part of it team projects can turn around and go from hundreds of people, sometimes even thousands of different people that touch one project 
to make to make one thing happen. Yeah, that's all a great point. One quick uh, housekeeping item. Um, if you look into the chat bar, uh, Michelle has added in the Minty code. So if you guys can, please go to minty.com and review that code. The next part, um, different type of engineers in Turner. As I said, you're working with uh, all different types of disciplines um, in the professional world, but inside of Turner, we have different project engineers that come from all different types of background, civil, mechanical, chemical, electrical, building science, and many more. Everyone in Turner has a different background because we need special, we need people that specialize in those backgrounds to be able to, to speak the language. So most people are like, what type of engineer can be a project engineer? It doesn't matter. If you're, you can be an engineer or a building science major. Sometimes we even have architects that work in the construction industry on Turner's side. So it takes every type of engineer and of every discipline it comes along and a lot of the times they can take on the role of a project engineer because they have their strong points, uh, they have their weak points, but that's part of the team. So we see every type of engineer come together to be a project engineer. Exactly, exactly what Donathan's saying. And that's kind of where this rolls into diversity. Like he's saying, you know, you have to know how to work with different types of personalities from all of your subcontractors and trade partners to your architects and designers and your owners. And um, it's really cool to see how everybody's backgrounds and different mindsets come together to problem solve on a project. So that's why, especially in construction, like I said, we're, we're problem solvers uh, at our bare minimum. It's really important to have diversity of people, which means diversity of thought, because um, I can speak, especially as being a female in this industry, you know, I'm going to solve a problem and approach a problem most likely in a different way than my male counterpart or than my superintendent or even uh, my senior PM or my uh, PX on a project because we all have a little bit different mindset. And so it's, it's really important to know that we love diversity of thought because it makes problem solving that much easier. And also on diversity, and we, we touch different groups. I mean, we, we we have engineers from every different background, every different culture. And we have engineers across the world, um, from Turner Inter International to here on U.S. soil. So we, we see every type of engineer, every type of culture, um, every type of race. And that's one of the, that's one of the big things about Turner. I and mean, we don't really, we don't look at who you are. It's really about what you do. And that's what makes um, Turner powerful. Not in that yeah. It's all about what you bring to the table um, to make the make the team. Agreed. Getting a little delay. There we go. Come on, technology. Here we go. All right. So one of the big things about Turner, um, being a project engineer, we have a toolbox. Um, most of the time when you think about toolbox, two boxes, um, you think about getting your hands uh, hands dirty and you're getting out there in the field and doing things. But for us, our toolbox most most of the time is technology. One of the big things that we use is uh, Bluebeam. Bluebeam for us uh, comes down to uh, us being able to write on a computer to express our thoughts. Pictures are worth a thousand words. And the only way to portray messages amongst a team is more so with a picture. So we take Bluebeam and we do markups. We put our we put our words on those to send out to everyone so they can understand what's going on here because you have architects, engineers, you have teams, you have owners across the world that need to understand what's going on in one place. So Bluebeam is one of our one of our markup tools. Instead of using paper, that's what we use. One of the next things in our toolbox that we use pretty much a lot on big jobs is BIM. BIM is building information management. It's a, it's a model uh, where you build a building um, in a 3D model before you actually um, before you actually start constructing it. That involves mechanical, electrical, plumbing, architecturals. You can even put seats inside of a building, but you want to look at the entire entire facade. Um, it's, it's very powerful. 
lot of the time, if you BIM a building before you actually build it, you get to uh, you get to figure out a lot of the problems before you get there in the field because you have engineers and architects that put things on paper, but putting it into a 3D model, you understand well, we have clashes. Clashes are where you have um, multiple disciplines hitting one another. Um, and so multiple disciplines of, of material hitting one another, and that just doesn't work. So that BIM model lets you identify those things before you get into a building. And from there, you can, you, you change the, you change the route of things and you get to go back to your architect and engineer and explain to them, Hey, you have to do these things a different way because this is how we're constructing it in the field. And a project engineer typically follows up on the model and he works or he or she works with several different entities to bring a model back together. The next thing we, we use is Procore. Procore is like our filing cabinet. Um, probably have a few young people on here, but some of you guys may know what a filing cabinet is. Hey, I, I don't use them, believe it or not. But I use Procore, and Procore is my filing cabinet. From there, we keep drawings. Um, we keep RFIs, which is requests for information when you have things going wrong. Submittals, um, where you're looking at uh, the actual, uh, actual things that contractors are giving back to you. Um, this is where you keep everything. This is the heart of a project. All of your information that you have to build a building is held in this one place in Procore. And it's always the latest and greatest because one of the big things that we know, we're in a ever-changing uh, world right now where we always want to have the latest and greatest going out so no one can say they're not knowing about something that changed. Everything is changing. COVID is changing a lot. So we want to make sure we get that information out about a building is changing. And Procore is the place where we always do that with communi by communicating with others. Um, yeah, all, all great points. You know, it should, uh, it should also be said that these are all fairly new in construction too. Um, technology alone has come so far, but especially in construction, uh, technology has just really changed this industry by leaps and bounds um, and it gets better and better pretty much every year still. Um, I would say, especially Procore, Procore's a newer program that we started using within the past two, three, four maybe years. And uh, it's really changed the game uh, for sure. Just in general, being having everything on an iPad or your iPhone that's accessible at your fingertips has changed this industry so much. Uh, before you have to carry on a big set of drawings, uh, my very first project out of school we were still, we had an old school superintendent. We had hard sets of drawings. And so as the engineer, as we discussed earlier, my job was to update those drawings with RFIs and changes. And the drawings were literally so big, they were bigger than I was. So it was like a workout having to flip through the sets and everything. So I'm really thankful that we've moved towards uh, iPads and everything from that perspective too. Right about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> A couple other uh, programs and software we use. Um, again, everything's pretty much cloud-based. So we set our projects um, on OneDrive. We use a lot with Turner. Again, it, it makes everything at your fingertips. You can be in the middle of, of a field, a uh, brand new building, and you can pull up basically any of your documents, which is really, really helpful. Um, OneNote is a big one that we use too. Again, going back to uh, taking meeting minutes, we're really big on um, organizing your day and you have a hot list to work off of. So that's something I use day in and day out. Um, Excel, my advice to you guys, uh, if you're still in school, man, try to become an Excel wizard. I have Excel open all day, every day. We do uh, spreadsheets. Uh, I don't think, it doesn't really matter if you're a PM, a super uh, engineer, you will use Excel to the extreme. And if you can become a wizard before you're, you're even in the field, you'll be very valuable to your team. And then uh, even just good old Google, there is definitely no shame in not knowing anything. Um, Google is a huge tool we use day in and day out because there's, again, so much new technology, even in building products. And we're seeing new products come on to jobs every day. And so it's always uh, good to kind of do your research. Um, so that way you know what you're talking about when you're approving a submittal or you're going into a meeting to talk about a product. Even something as simple as Google is, is a lifesaver. If you don't know, Google knows. <laughs> <laughs> That's right.
All right. So life after work at Turner. A lot of the times we work hard, but we like to, I mean, you like to play harder. It's it's all in us. It's called, um, I mean, it's, it's just part of life. Um, and for us, we always, we have this thing called work-life balance. Uh, a lot of the times we go from eight hours, 10, 12, I mean, this may be scary, sometimes 14 hour days without going home to our families because we're at work working. So it, it all varies. But the work-life balance that we have amongst our teams, because we see these people more than sometimes we see our family, is we do team gatherings. Um, team gatherings. That may involve us just going out, grabbing some food, or even go to someone out, someone's house having a barbecue. We love to eat. We love to have fun. And we crack jokes and we just wind down. The other thing that we do, we do team, team building. Um, for team building, we, we go out and we, we race go-karts. Best thing to do, might be in the office and you get a little frustrated, but beating somebody in a go-kart race, man, that's completely fun. Um, but that's just it. Um, we work hard, but we always have to get out there and we have to play. We understand that we all have to wind down. And it's just part of life. We're all humans. And that's part of being a project engineer. You work a lot and you have to you have to have fun. Life isn't it's about having fun. Like Donovan said, so, um, I, I feel like, especially at Turner, um, you know, these people become your family. You spend so much of your time with them, especially, you know, you could be put on a large size project and you could be working with the same people for three years straight. And uh, when you go through the trenches together and you go through some hard times on projects, you, you really create that family type bond. So this is a, uh, all these are definitely regular occurrences uh, at Turner Projects. A couple of other ones I want to hit on is volunteering. Um, definitely giving back to our communities. Turner has a really strong presence in all of the cities and communities they're a part of, which really speaks, I think, to the company. Um, and then as well as mentorship, and that's internally within Turner. Uh, we have a pretty strong peer mentorship program, and a lot of that comes naturally as you meet more people within the company and you work with different people. And then as well as externally, um, the picture you see here in the middle is actually a program that uh, I was a part of founding here at Turner called Girls Build It, and it's our outreach program to high school girls to let them know that, man, a career in construction is, is for you. It's definitely an option on the table um, because that's not something that's presented to people very often, I think, especially uh, in high school and possibly even in college. I don't know all of your experiences, but I think a lot more people lean towards um, engineering because they don't even know what a career in construction would look like on the management side. So again, just kind of the outreach of, man, this is a really rewarding career that we want more and more people to be part of. With that, that's kind of uh, an overview. I know we hit you guys with a lot of information, but we wanna open it up to any other questions. Um, feel free to type them in the chat or to use the raise the hand feature. Um, I did add the, the updated Minty code in the chat. If you guys don't mind logging on that and, and putting your name in there for us, we'd appreciate it. We'll give everybody a couple minutes if you wanna start typing some questions. see here. Ethan Baker has his hand raised. Yep, I'm trying to see how I let Ethan talk. There it is. Ethan, I think you're good. All right, can everybody hear me? We can. Awesome. Thanks, uh, thanks Don and Michaela, for uh, taking the time out of your guys' day to do this for us. Um, I just had a, a question more for Michaela. Um, I just came off an internship um, with the Nashville business unit over at the Broad West project. Um, oh, had a yeah. great time. Uh, really enjoy getting to know everybody at Turner. You guys are awesome. Um, more on the, so obviously Broad West, uh, for those of you who don't know, it's a, it's a, it's a pretty big project. Um, we had, a had, had some struggles with dealing with COVID. Um, I, I wanted to know, how did that really affect the, the special divisions, uh, the special projects unit? Um, just kind of like the smaller projects. I didn't know if, if that affected you guys a little bit more than the bigger 
you know, with a big project like that, we can't really slow down. Um, how did that affect the, the smaller projects? Yeah, great question. Um, COVID definitely threw a wrench and I think everybody's plan this year. Um, for the project I'm on currently, it really didn't slow us down very much either. Um, I'm actually about to start a project within the Broadwest building, so I'm, I'm very familiar with Broadwest and getting more familiar every day. But um, yeah, we, we powered through kind of like everybody else. Um, of course, Turner has a lot, new, uh, a lot of new standards and practices and protocols in place for COVID. So again, it goes back to you, you guys got to be flexible and willing to pivot. So that's what we did. We pivoted. Um, we started putting all those new protocols in place and we were able to continue. Um, it's kind of been a project by project case too. Um, my owner was not going anywhere. They were happy to proceed with the project. They were very understanding of, of course, it kind of slowed production down while we were all kind of figuring out what the next step was and how we were going to proceed, but we were lucky enough to keep working through it. So yeah, great question. Thank you. Yeah. So we have a couple questions in the chat box. Starting with Sean. Yeah, Sean says, what's your primary range in cities of major presence? Um, go ahead, Donovan. Hey, Sean, we have, um, I believe, 57 offices around the U.S. Um, so the cities in our present, it, it ranges across the entire U.S and where, where we are. Some, some states, we have multiple um, offices and pretty much what office you're in, that's the, that's the region that you, that you attack and you take care of that, the, the area around you. So for, for Memphis, we, we touch a little bit of, to the, we touch a little bit of Middle Tennessee. Um, we do Mississippi um, slightly just to the, the north, northern half of Mississippi, and depending on, we have not branched into Arkansas, but it's, it's pretty much just the, the surroundings of the area that you're in. Um, sometimes we do get clients that would like us to go into areas where we do not have offices, but that's just on a client-to-client -client basis. So we, we can be pretty much anywhere um, around the U.S. at any point, depending on our client and the project. Exactly. And so just for a little bit more clarification too, um, even though me and Donovan are in separate cities, we're part of a, a bigger conglomerate of region and business unit. So our Nashville, Huntsville and Memphis offices kind of work as one unit and we have a lot of shared resources that help us uh, all stay connected through our different projects too. Um, but probably for the best, if you want to see all the places Turner is, if you go to turnerconstruction.com, they have a really cool interactive map that shows all of our active projects uh, throughout the United States. And then Donovan also mentioned international. Turner does build um, and do a lot of work internationally, which is another kind of uh, segment of our overall company that's really cool that you guys should check out. Second question that we have here, um, project engineer, the typical entry position for engineering grads. Um, it's not the typical entry for engineering grads. Um, you work your way up um, through engineering assistant, assistant engineer, become an engineer, and then at that point, get to become a project engineer. Um, so you have to go through the levels to get to a project engineer because it's many things that I didn't know, um, and that's all based on your, your knowledge and your experience. So you can come in at that point, but it's all based on knowledge and experience that you have. But most of the time you work your way up through the ranks so that you can understand. Uh, you can have a solid foundation so that you can have something to stand on and be, be taught a lot of things. So you, when you do get to that point um, of being a project engineer, so it all depends on what your, your background is and your foundation. Yeah, exactly. And so like what Donovan is describing to an engineering assistant, you would do the same um, type. You would probably just do bits and pieces of kind of the, the day and the responsibilities we've laid out, but you would get to work under another project engineer. So they would get to teach you and show you the ropes. So that's always good too. The next question is, do you have offices in North Michigan and do you have a say in where you 
believe we may have one in Detroit. I can't confirm that because I haven't looked at the offices up north. But as Michaela said, you can definitely look on to the, the Turner website. And one of the things you, you ask, do you have a say in where you go? You definitely, I would say yes, because you want to apply for those cities. And one of the biggest things about Turner, that's why I came to them and I love them still to this day. And I don't think I'm probably going anywhere anytime soon or ever, if that is because they listen to you. So if you're one and that place has openings, yes, they will, they will do their best to get you there. But if that place does not have openings, you tend to go more so where they need you. But if they ever have an opening and you ask to, to transfer, that's the, that's the best thing about a big company. If you start in Memphis and we get an opening in Detroit, if we have the office there, you can go there. You can always ask to transfer, but uh, if we don't have, play, if, if we do have an opening in a certain place. Exactly. Got a couple minutes left. Don't want to hold anybody up, but if you guys have any more questions, uh, either raise your hand or type them in the box. Um, again, hopefully we've got on Menti. Uh, use the code in the chat. Don't use the code on the screen. Sorry about that. Uh, while anybody might be typing some final messages, I'll leave you guys with my two cents and what I tell everybody coming in this industry. Um, I would highly encourage you guys trying to get a co-op or internship, whether it was Turner or another company. Um, it's really the best way for not only for you to figure out if this industry is what you want to do, but it's also a great way for that company to interview you and for you to interview the company. You know, uh, everybody's not created equal. I'm obviously biased to Turner. I love it here. Um, I started here and I, like Donna said, I don't have any plans to go anywhere. Um, we're, we're a really great company, so I hope we stay on one of your options, but you know, you, everybody's different. You got to explore those options too. And then uh, my second thing that I always tell everybody is do not be afraid to ask questions. That's the fastest way you're going to learn, um, whether it's in your classes now or if you do get an internship or if you come on as a full-time hire somewhere, don't be afraid to ask the question. Um, I know people say there's no such thing as a stupid question and it's cliche, but it's really true because nobody's going to know or be able to teach you if they don't know what you don't know. So those are my two cents and, and parting words. You got anything else, Donovan? Um, I'm assuming all you guys are in college right now. So you have some of the brightest minds right now. So if you're with the whole COVID thing, if you're looking into construction and you can make things better, Turner is always open ears for that. We always want new people to come into the industry and they will listen to the innovation that you have. So if you're innovative and you like construction and you're an engineer and you think you can do things better, the first answer is never no. They will always open up the ears and if you, and if you can make things happen, hey man, we welcome you at any point. So if you want to be innovative and do new things or show some of the old people, well, I don't want to say old. <laughs> <laughs> show some of the other people that it's the easier way to do it. We're more than happy to, to welcome you to those things as well. I would love to see that as well. So. Awesome. Well, guys, we'll wrap it up here. Again, really appreciate your time. Hope everybody's staying safe. Um, I know it's crazy, but uh, y'all just keep your heads up and keep doing what you're doing, and uh, we'll be in touch. Enjoy and be safe, everyone, with this with the COVID pandemic. Please. Awesome. Take care, guys.